Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers and today is the day that we've all been waiting for for a long long time because we're going to make this beautiful mermaid all needle felted with a, a wire armature inside, very simple wire armature with this beautiful floaty hair and apparently I've got no sound. Oh crap. Oh, it's not, we have got sound. It's, it's, uh, everything's good, everything's good. With this beautiful floaty hair, which is, um, you probably just got a very confused look on my face for a very brief moment. Um, and um, she's, she's decorated with uh, beautiful sparkly uh, uh, beads and she's got the shells here um, as, a, as a bikini top, if you like, and a little sequin around her waist. Of course, you can decorate her in a different way and she's got a very sort of dainty little face as well. And all of this is possible because you might have got our mermaid pack and um, they're still available everything stays on our youtube channel so you can buy the pack and still join because it comes in two parts and part two is next week on tuesday at the same time so you can catch up we also stream on a thursday on Facebook at 7 p.m. It's a repeat of what we're doing here right now. So you, we, there's no getting away from us, basically. And with all of our live streams, we do have a giveaway. So if you're watching this live today on the 27th of um, July 2021, you're in for a chance to win. And we've got a, um, we always have a question that we would like you to answer with uh, your comments that you can post in into the uh, running commentary on the side of um, on the side or below depends what what um, what device you're watching this on and the today's price is a new wool mix that we will be um, listing very shortly but you'll be the first to have it and it's the enchanted forest wool mix and we would like you to tell us if you were a mermaid or a merman, what would your name be? So pop it in the comments. Emma is um, supporting uh, me today. She will pick a winner at random towards the end of um, the live stream. I'll give her the heads up when she can pick it. And on Thursdays, when we are repeating our live stream on YouTube, it will be Hannah who will be picking the winner. So there are two chances to win on a Tuesday live on YouTube and on a Thursday live on Facebook at 7 p.m. Right. Oh yes, I need to show you what that um, wool mix is like. Now this is in a in a new bag. Russell, Russell, Russell. It's been um, manhandled a lot because we're only just starting to change over bags. Sorry, it's very noisy. But the bag, believe it or not, is now. Are you ready? This bag, this bag is fully compostable in your home compost. We are so excited by this. It just literally disappears into the worms and um, compost of your of your compost heap, basically. Um, so we are going to start packing all of our wool mixes and wool um, that we're sending out to you in these environmentally, super totally friendly bags. So you just have to be, please just get the bag, never mind the wool. But you will get all of this wool, which is the Enchanted Forest, where you have... Um, a nice brown because you need brown in a forest. In fact, you get three browns. Then you get some white and then you get um, the fairy mix, the dragon mix, the golden orange mix, the variegated red. You get two sets of curls for moss and tr uh, tree roots. You get our variegated green and you get the rainbow drops green just for a little bit of extra um, color to, um, to put in your enchanted forest. And we will be doing a toadstool house tutorial towards the end of the year and these will be coming in very handy. They won't make the whole toadstool because you need lots of core wool, but they will be great for decorating and adding little um, flowers and pebbles um, for the for the doorstep and so on onto it. And that uh, toadstool house is coming, so watch out for this. I'm not going to squish this back in the bag because I'm already, I've already been rustling for way too long. So I'm just going to put it down here for now. <laughs> right, so tell us what your mermaid or merman name would be if you were one. Or maybe you are one. Tell us what that name is and we um, we may pick you as a winner for our compostable bag. <laughs> but you also get the wool inside. Right, let's have a look who's here today. 
Um, so we have got um, Sam is there. Hi Sam, Ashley, Ava, uh, Van Vampire Venom, Catherine is there. Um, Catherine's had problems with her shoulder, so she might have to. Um, she's giving it a try. Great. Okay, Sandra, morning from Spring Lake in Michigan. Very warm welcome um, across the big pond. Diana is there. Uh, already the mermaid. Michael is there. Are you making a mermaid or a merman, Michael? That's what we need to know. Um, Marion is there. Meg is there. Jane. Um, o van der Meer is there. I, I need to find out what the O stands for. And um, Botanical Brew. Ooh, Selma the mermaid. We're already getting names for mermaids. Vampire Venom. Um, I probably said that already. Ashley is there. Serena is there. Judy is there. Rose. Sandra. Oh no, I already said. Oh, is there two people from Michigan? Oh my goodness, what am I doing? No. Oh no, she just said it twice. Still the same Sandra. And then, um, yeah, that's basically it. So let's uh, remember to give us the thumbs up. If you um watching this video, give us the thumbs up. You have no choice in that matter. And um, if you're not subscribed to our channel yet, then please do and uh, pop over and, um, and subscribe and tell all your friends to subscribe too. So we can grow our uh, numbers of subscribers. That would be great. Thank you very much. Right, let's have a look what's inside the pack. So if you've had this through the post, then you will have had exactly what I'm seeing here now. Get the instructions for the mermaid. Um, they are full color instructions. There is a template on, on this one as well. And you get um, a little bit about our needle felting products in there, needle felting in general. It has got two uh, wires in there. They're actually the longer, they're so long they don't fit on the screen, but they're 45 centimeters long, the steel wires, which we now absolutely love. And then you have a, a, a whole choice of colors here. Today, we're only going to probably use this part of um, the wool. Um, we might get to this part, but we're definitely not getting to this part, nor this part, which is Angelina fiber and um, a little bit of um, pink for her mouth and the decoration. So I'm going to leave this in the box. Don't even need to take that out and keep it safe for next time. For next week in fact and let's have a look at the instructions so try and follow the instructions and not not go off in a on a random path as I often do so this one makes a uh, one mermaid and we're starting with the head and um, we are wrapping about one centimeter of the of the first wire just one the end of one centimeter now if you've never wrapped wool around the wire then um if you have this pack and this wire and this wool you're you have a great head start and i'm teasing a strand of wool off i'm trying to tease it in the direction that the fibers are running so i don't have to um worry too much about it it, it just doesn't um separate so much but look at this springiness of this lanolin rich core wool we absolutely love it for needle felting a core either by using it around the wire or by um, making just shapes out of it. It has been cold washed, so it retains the natural lanolin um, in the wool, which is great for wrapping the wire because it kind of sort of sticks to itself. And the way that I wrap the wire, I hold the wire in my right hand, the wool in my left hand. However, you might do this the other way around, depending if you're right or left-handed. And then I hold on to the wispy wool here um, on my on my right, and I'm folding the other part, uh, uh, the other end around it. Now I'm I'm working really close. Oh dear. Okay, I'm going. I'm doing this wrong already. Imagine this was flesh pink. Take that off. Flesh pink. Oh my god, how has that happened? Okay, sorry about this, guys. It almost looks the same color on the screen to me, anyway. So what I've just shown you is generally what you do to wrap wool if you had a lanolin rich wool. Hopefully you haven't done this, what I've just done. Um, you do. We do the same with pink. With this um, wool, it's just as nice to wrap it because it's a really soft, long fibered wool. This is actually the Australian Merino. So starting again, it's the same principle. I just picked up the wrong wool. I'm so excited by lanolin rich wool that um, I got a bit carried away. So 
work your way around the wire, keep really close to the wire so that you can pull it nice and tight when you're um, close. Now for the head, it doesn't matter so much if it looks a little bit more loose or a bit lumpy, um, but we want really neat hands later. So this is good a good practice to get um, your wrapping skills um, up to speed. And when you've wrapped about one centimeter, you're going to bend the wire in. Now I've got fingers of steel. If you need a set of pliers, then obviously use them. So what you've done now is you've trapped the wool and now you're just going to build up bulk fairly quickly on top of what you've already done. The um, the head itself should be about two and a half centimeters in diameter. So what I, I didn't specifically say this in the instructions, but what I've learned since then, that, that I've sort of worked out myself, is that I, I naturally keep my right hand close to the top of the wire so that the wool isn't allowed to slip down it. Um, that's only something that I've learned recently when I did a workshop on the first first one in many many years face to face that I realized when sometimes you need to see how people are doing it that if you hold the wire there the wool wants to slip down here so I'm holding the um I'm holding the wire fairly high up to the bobble that I'm trying to build up so that um the wool doesn't slip down and I keep adding layers keep the wool flat try and make it as tight as you can and wrap it around the center almost like the equator of that ball. And then at some point you will need to needle felt. Now I, um, I'm i using um, a fine needle. That wasn't actually a fine needle that I've just picked up. And um, this wool is so fine, this Australian Merino, that it's best to work with a fine needle straight away. And then you get the best result doing that. Now I've got a long wire here at the end, but I'm stabbing into the base first give it a few stubs because that maintains the nice round shape and then I'm stabbing all over so to uh, fasten the wool in it's not the right size yet if you need to measure the size on all of our instructions there's a centimeter tape measure here on the left hand side every page so you can um, check your size of the head against um, against that um, that side there um, and I don't think I'm still not using a, a fine needle, so I'm going to get a fine needle out now. I've got what I'm getting out now is an extra fine needle, a 42, um, which we absolutely love the 42 twisted. And I'm getting um, a fine, um, just a, a, um, a 40 fine twisted needle out. Um, as long as you've got a 40 gauge needle, you should be fine. And it will make you, oh yeah, that's much better. Now I can actually stub into it without the needle bouncing off. So it's definitely worth getting the needles right on this one. Use a fine needle and then you um, you <clears throat> you can make a nice smooth finish as well. The 42 fine needles are brilliant if you really like to give it a very, very smooth finish. Often people say, how do I get rid of um, little pock marks? And if you use a fine needle, especially the 42 twist, um, twisted needle um, they're absolutely brilliant and these are of course the, the German made Grotz Beckert needles which we all love so very much no bias there so keep wrapping more of the wool around it until you've achieved the size of the two and a half centimeters so I'm teasing the wool as I'm wrapping it to keep it nice and nice and thin and once you've done that, then again, use your felting needle, stab it down into place, keep that round shape, mind the needle inside, uh, the um, wire inside, that could be quite a, um, a sad story if you keep breaking your needles. And felt the wool into place, mind that end of the wire. We do need the whole end of that wire attached to the head. We can't cut it off because that will make, that, that that is why we love the wire so much, because it's slightly longer than the pipe cleaners and it actually allows us to make the whole shape of the mermaid all in one. So um, the, um, you, you just need to make sure you don't poke it in your eye as you're turning the ball at the end of the wire. I can't believe I started off wrong. 
dear, oh dear, that wasn't even, that was just wrong. That wasn't even the variation um, or another way of getting there. Well, I suppose you could have done it in lanolin rich first and then cover it in pink. So strictly speaking, if you started out with lanolin rich, it's not the end of the world. You can um, just put pink over the top. But um, yeah, apologies for that. There we go. That's it. I don't know how everybody liked that really, 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 really hot weather uh, we had in the UK or in parts of the UK anyway last week. But I, I love the heat, but I really, it really got to me somehow. I'm not entirely sure why. Normally I'm okay with hot weather, but last week I just wanted it to be cool. So it's a lot cooler now, which is quite nice. There we go. So that's um, the head. Um, it's not finished entirely, but I'm just going to measure it against my... Yeah, getting there. This is actually two and a half centimeters. So now all I need to do is just smooth it out a bit. With um, these little heads of fairies, or in this case the mermaid, you just have to remember that you only need about one quarter of it to look nice because the rest will be covered with hair. So it doesn't matter so much if it's um, a little bit... Um, if it looks slightly out of shape or if it has lumps and bumps in it. Just have one quarter of it that looks nice and make sure that that is going to be the face when you um, continue with your with your mermaid. But if you want to make everything nice, then of course do so, do so too. So um, in a minute we're going to put this ball shape to one side because we're going to work on the arms next. But I check in how everybody's doing in the chat and um, and see if we've got some exciting mermaid names coming, mermaid or merman names coming, coming through. Right, so I'm going to finish with this head now. This is um, as much as I'm going to do on this. It's like a little a round lollipop at the end of a wire, um, end of a wire, and um, that's what hopefully yours will look like in a minute too. And that's what it looks like if I hold it up, a little balloon um, there. And um, I'm going to put this to one side. Let's have a look at the chat and see what's going on. Um, oh, Carol says she's already made um, the, the mermaid for, for her under the sea. Oh, yes, I should also say that we've got lots and lots of under the sea stuff here still. And if you don't know this yet, all of these have been live streams. So you can, ah, no, I'm lying. The octopus hasn't. We've saved that until next year, but it is comes as a kit so you can you can um, make him. But we've done the narwhal, the starfish. We've done these the tower shells. We've done the clam shell. We've done the fish. Um, and we have done, well, we're doing the mermaid now. So there's lots, um, lots for you to catch up on if you haven't watched the live streams already. And, oh yeah, I was looking at names. So... Um, my name would be Sea Star, um, the mermaid. Tri Ooh, Tridonia, the shark friends. Shark friends, says O van der Meer. Um, my mermaid name would be Shimmer. Um, oh my goodness, there's lots of nice names coming through. I'm telling you now, I thought you'd all be taking the mickey out of these mermaids and call them all kinds of naughty things, but they're all really nice names. They're like... So, um, Diana says my mermaid would be called Serena. I don't know why, but that's the name that sprang into my mind. Maybe that's because Serena is watching um, Diana. Have you thought of that? We actually have got a Serena watching. Um, Ashley says my mermaid name would be Shelley. Sandra says my um, Celine of the Sea would be my mermaid name. Um, Judy says my mermaid name is Glory. Michael says mermaid name... Feltuna of Sandy Bay. Now that is very posh. Um, oh, there's another one from uh, USA. Rose is from USA. Um, Serena says, my name will be Shimmer. Did I already say that? Probably. Marion says, I would like to be Mermaid Mariana. Oh, that's nice. Oh, we've got somebody from um, Australia there as well. Um, oh, no, we're not, not Australia. I'm going to sound Arizona. Arizona! AZ Arizona. Okay, now I'm going to sound really dumb. But I will also say that I have been to the US when I was 15 years old. And um, when they asked me, where are you from? And I said, from Germany. Nobody ever had heard of Germany. So <laughs> cut me some slack. Um, and I thought they were taking the mickey, but they were totally serious. 
uh, uh, Alison says nearly forgot to watch. Oh, well, you're here now, so that's good. Oh, Natasha is here. Um, hi, Natasha. Wow, lots of new viewers here today. Welcome all, says Emma. I can uh, uh, echo that. Lady Pearl of of the Andaman Sea. It's probably a place I should know how to pronounce and um, don't. Jane says, I would be called Mermaid of the Blue. Um, Rosie, well, Rose says, mine would be called Rosie the Mermaid. Um, thank you, Diana. Wrong wool. I know. Um, my husband would probably be Pete or Peter because he doesn't come up with in interesting names for himself. <laughs> says Vampire Venom. Lorna says, hello, Sapphire um, would be my mermaid's name. Sapphire would be my... She says, hello, Sapphire would be my mermaid's name. Not hello, Sapphire. Sorry, said that wrong. Um, What else? Oh my god. Okay. Uh, Pearl, we've got another one. F um, um, somebody wants to call it Pearl. Nikki says that. And um, Bridget says, from Australia. She's from Australia. My mermaid name would be Flow Keeper of the Sea Forest. When I first read it, I thought you said Kipper. <laughs> Kipper. Um, Vampire Venom, another good name that I thought of when someone mentioned a river would be Brook, although the one that runs past the front of my house would be a bit shallow unless it was a fairy-sized mermaid. Oh, I never thought of mermaids living in rivers, but I like that idea. Um, Natasha says, I'd be a mer-queen rather than a mermaid. Of course you would. And my royal name would be HRH. Yes, we would, wouldn't dare think anything else, Natasha. Um, Ashley says maybe a jellyfish next year too. Yeah, definitely. I want to do a jelly jellyfish. Really easy. Right. Let's get back to the mermaid. So we've got our head, which we're going to put one side. And now um, I'm going to get the right wool. We're working with um, the pink, flesh pink wool. So we're going to take um, another wire and cut off 16 centimeter um, length. And I'm, I, I've done it again. I have done it again. I can see my pliers and they're over there, but I haven't got them with me. So I'm going to have to use scissors. Now, do not use your best scissors if you um, want to use them for anything else after. But if you've got some scissors that have already been um, through the walls, then just use your scissors to cut the wire. However, um, I should say use your wire cutters. But this is 16 centimeters that I've just cut with my scissors. Sorry, 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 sorry. And um, now I'm going to start wrapping the hands at one end. Now, remember what I said, be really, really, um, use nimble fingers and be really, really spare with how you wrap the wool. So I'm, you can barely see it in the camera. Don't know if you can see it better here, barely. But you, you literally start out, let the wool grip into this sort of slightly serrated wire. Can you hear it? It's, it's not a, a, a smooth wire, which works really well for wrapping wool. Get the wool to grip, build up again, as you did before, a centimeter, and then bend the wire in, making sure that the bend is actually covered in pink, and then continue wrapping the wool around that parallel wire that you've just bent in, and keep wrapping the wool up the arm. And I wrap and I tighten, I wrap and I tighten, I wrap and I tighten. That's the motion that I am doing. You can also, Take, t turn the whole thing round. So you're still holding the hand in the in the same hand as you did before. You're still holding the wool in the same hand, but now you are twisting the um, the wire and you're letting the wool feed through your um, finger and thumb, and that makes a nice taut tension. You want to go up towards the center, but you don't want to cover. The middle and then if you are wrapping um, if you need to come back on yourself and you want to add a few more layers then um, do so but remember that you always have to um, add any layers on top of a bit of a layer underneath in the same direction so I'm going back over myself um, not over myself over the arm again um, and just let the last tiny wispy fibers let them sort of disappear into um, the, the layer that you have made and that makes a really neat arm if you need to needle felt it use your fine needles you could initially just go through the little hand where the, the, the wires um, are sort of 
the meat. If if it's if if it's fluffy and you need to needle felt it, then go in at a shallow angle with your very fine needle and just um do a very sort of just a patch up job so that the fibers just sort of tangle together. If you stab in that way from the top, what you do is you push the fibers through the arm, they come out at the other end, then you've got a messy underneath. So you have to keep repeating it. Eventually, you have to make such shallow stabs that the wool will felt in into itself and not go through to the other side. And now I'm repeating this on the other side so you can watch it again. So get hold of your wool so that it's, it's dangling here. And then um, begin by making a really thin layer. It's better to wrap a hundred times and make a nice thin layer than to wrap ten times and just have like thick um, layers that sort of want to come off because the thin layers will also help you to um, to keep it tight and neat. Bend the end in by about half a centimeter. Make sure that the bend is actually covered in pink so that you don't have a, um, a the wire showing through and then continue wrapping up the arm nice and tight, wrap, tighten, wrap, tighten, wrap, tighten, that's what I do, wrap, tighten, or turn the whole thing round, use your fingers um, to keep the tension as the wool slips through, use the other hand to twist the wire round. Now I don't have enough wool to go back on myself, so what I need to do now is, if I want to make that arm match that one, I've got to go back the way that I started, because you've got to do the same um, direction wrap underneath it. So I'm starting exactly how I did with um, the wire before it had wool on, um, but um, obviously I'm wrapping now over the existing pink wool. Make a nice tight wrap. Keep the wool that you're wrapping around fairly thin, so don't have it too wide and you're covering too much area all at once. And then um, really tighten the wool as you um, wrap and go along the wire and then at the very end just give it a make sure that the wispy ends are completely um, in there. So now I've got an arm that has got a um, about a centimeter or finger width exposed in the middle wire exposed. If you happen to have gone all the way across it's not the end of the world is you can still make a really beautiful um, mermaid that way. So um, that's the arms done. And what we're going to do now is we are going to take our head, well, the mermaid's head at least, and now we've got to secure the arms around that long wire that's poking out from under the head. And we're only we're doing this by literally twisting um, the arms around so that they're in the same position again, but with a twist in the middle. So I'm going around and back on myself there. Now, if you um, have one arm longer than the other, then you can sort of slightly adjust it by twisting by twisting it um, further one way or the other. So you can you can make some adjustments that way, and then you are going to slip the arms up so that they are right under the head. Um, so they they're still they're still like propelling around like a like a propeller, but in a minute they won't because we're going to use now finally the London Ridge core wool, which I wanted to use at the very beginning, but that was wrong. And um, I'm going to show you how we're going to secure the arms against the head in a minute. Right, let's just see how everybody's getting on. Well, I can't see how you're getting on, but uh, let's uh, see what people are saying. Natasha so therefore says, as she's royal, um, I'd be, um, oh no, she hasn't actually given us a name. Natasha, what's your name going to be then? What's your royal mermaid name? Her Royal Highness, what? Um, and I, I did read your message, um, your comment earlier on social media that you're having um, a highly energetic day. I feel like that very often. And yes, that's usually when things go wrong. And I can fit, um, I can probably talk to five people at the same time, fit twice the amount of words in, than, um, than I would normally do. And I also would probably knock over a jug of water, just like you. So it um, depends what side of the bed I got out in the morning. Um, I usually don't do things slowly. That's the only other thing. So it's always quite fast. But I have met people who are faster than me, so I'm not the worst. Right, let's go back to the mermaid. Um, or maybe I should tell you something else, let people catch up. So basically, what can I tell you? Um, remember, you can win yourself an Enchanted Forest wool mix, which is new. If you're late and joining, I'll show you what is in it again. 
um, you get some beautiful brown shades, some white, and you also get um, some sort of autumn autumnal colors here, but you get the fairy mix and the dragon mix, some green and brown curls, our variegated green, and the raindrops, um, rainbow drops green as well. And um, somebody's asked the question whether the um, beeswax balm would help with wrapping um, the arms, and yes, it would. Definitely. So if you use the beeswax balm, you could either get a little tub or you could get um, the heart shapes. If you've got the heart shapes, you could actually run the wire through the dip of the heart. That just adds extra stickiness to the wire and that helps to grip um, to grip the wool. There's so many ways if you're really struggling to get um, to get the wool to grip. You can also, what I have done in the past, you can use your glue stick and just put the end of the wire in it and that adds the, the minutest thin um, layer of um, of glue onto the end. That works as well. The uh, advantage of the beeswax balm is that you can use it on the outside as well. So you can uh, use the sort of greasiness of, of, the, of the beeswax balm on your fingers to smooth the fibers, whereas you wouldn't want to do that with glue. So the glue is more just to establish the wrap. And yes, so that definitely works. If you've got beeswax balm, use it. It's really lovely. Right, um, so let's go back to, um, you can definitely use the beeswax balm to smooth the finished fibers as well. It does, um, how can I say? So I've used it on animals. I've used it on animals because it doesn't, it, if it gets a bit grubby, um, then it doesn't matter so much. I wouldn't use it on fairies because it could sort of slightly look like grubby arms. So I, I prefer it if they look that that sort of clean clean look but you can you can use it if that's if that if it helps you then why not um right um what was i going to tell you what else so uh oh yes next live streams let's have a look at that so next week we're obviously going um, back and finishing off the mermaid then we have got on the 10th of august we've got the seascape landscape coming up and then um on three weeks of scarecrows yay he's such a funny little character i've been out this morning taking photos of him in the veg patch and he had a good look at the sunflowers that are growing at the moment um so that's really fun right i'm going straight into um the overhead camera to show you how to do the um how to secure the arms now so you have a strand in fact that was the strand i used earlier um of of the lanolin rich core wool now and you're just crisscrossing around one arm around the body and then crisscrossing around the other arm um and the body so that you fasten the arms now to the to the wire and they're not slipping and sliding around anymore and the idea is that you are going to cover the whole of the wire with this with this um, wool so you can um, start building layers up um, I'm just going to build a few layers here on the body and you are meant to cover all of that wire now with this wool so work your way down the body it doesn't have to be as neat as with the arms because um, it's going to get covered with lots and lots of other wool on the top but you'd also don't want it to come off because then it just becomes a nuisance and it'll be in your way so wrap the wool around it now I'm normally wrap the other way so this feels a bit awkward I should have um, I'm doing this the other way around now which um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the other end because you want to wrap the whole of the wire but if I start at the other end then it will be the same way I'm wrapping the wool. I don't need to get rid of my um, I don't need to get rid of the end of the wire in fact I'm leaving a little bit exposed because I need that in a minute to hook it back onto the body so it doesn't matter if you're wrapping it from that end or from that end the main thing is that this wire needs to be wrapped in the lanolin rich core so get it on there however you want to and um, I'm doing it with a twist twisty way here I've got the end of my mermaid doing some weird acrobatic tricks here set get around I've, I, I, I genuinely had a lot of fun this morning taking photos I took photos of the um, of the um, love in the mist fairies which are out 
was the changeover of the Makers Box on Sunday, the 1st of August. So that was, um, th I really enjoyed doing that. That was quite fun. Um, and um, what else did I take photos of? Oh, yes, uh, our pumpkin fairy. She's um, going to make an appearance after the Love and the Mist fairies. So um, that's harvest time already. How did we get to that? So she's been sitting in with the courgette plants earlier because they've got these lovely bright yellow flowers at the moment. A lot of them have turned into courgettes already and um, took some photos of the dragonfly fairy, which is the current is the current fairy. So, right, getting there slowly but surely. I know it looks mega long, but um, you'll be surprised how quickly it'll just be um, the tail and the rest of the mermaid. So cover all of it. Just a little bit of wool short here. Try and remember which way I started. And cover it until you've got an, an, a relatively even cover, even if it's not that as even as you um, as the arms. It's absolutely fine. We're building so many more layers on top of it. Lots of wrapping going on here. That's wool, not me wrapping. Right. And then um, you've got the end of the wire. I'm going to go to the end of the wire because not it doesn't all fit right into it. So measure 25 centimeters from the end of the wire. Remember, you have got your measure here. So 25 centimeters is, is, is up until here, end of the wire. It's quite a long bit. And um, you, you're making a loop. So that that little bit of wire that you've left exposed, you're now going to use it to wrap it around the um, main wire. So now you've got a, um, a relatively big loop there. And of course, that loop we need to turn into a tail. So you're going to push half of it in. Um, if you have pliers, then use the pliers to really twist the wire shut so it doesn't pop open. And then you need to just make these ends of the fishtail pointy so that you've got um, something like that. Um, and now from now on, we're going to use only the lanolin rich core wool to cover the wire and build the body shape. That's basically what we're going to do. And you have got um, a tail, a tail thin template. So that is something that you could use to remind yourself as you're wrapping the wool um, over it to keep, oops, sorry, come up, gone out of the picture, to keep reminding yourself that this is what you're aiming for. You, you're you going to keep the tail so that it fits into this template. So um, from now on, as I said, you're just using the lanolin rich core wool and I'm just gonna read, best read what I've written. And we're starting at the tail. So take um, a small wisp of, of the lanolin ridge and wrap it so that the, the, the two uh, parallel wires are going to be covered. So you, you're trying to do that tapered. So don't pull it too tight. Leave, leave, that, um, leave it tight at the end and then um, go a little bit softer towards the top. We'll do that on the other side as well. You don't need a lot of wool to take the, make the tail. So keep it nice and soft going up. Do that on that side as well again. So I haven't needle felted this down yet. And then cover. So I'm taking the wool off lengthways so that I have the fibers running in one direction rather than fighting it um, on from the other side and then obviously you've got to start sort of making your way up the tail as well but uh, for now I'm just going to needle felt my tail down so I'm still um, you can use them um, now do we do yes you'd use a medium needle for this use a medium needle to felt the wool down I'm going in between the wire to start with because I know that's a safe place where I don't break my needle and um, remember, all of this will be covered in the different shades of blue later on. So I don't need to worry if it looks not so nice. If it, yeah, if it looks a little bit like a mummy at the moment. Felt this down. 
I'm using our earth friendly felting mat, which um, has been used before, as you can tell, so it's not pristine and white anymore, but you can clean it quite effectively with a with a um, brush that we we um, we use. We have in fact two brushes. One is like a squidgy silicon one, and the other one is a is a really super strong um, rubber one that um, yeah definitely works really well. I've had lot, we've had lots of good feedback on that one. So I'm felting already along the tail. Now um, one of the common things that could potentially go wrong with a mermaid is that the this 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 part that I'm felting right now, this part here, becomes too thick. So you really want to be you don't want to build too much um, uh, wool on on there, and um, and now you're going to work your way up the body with the remainder of um, the lanolin um, core. I'm going to just add a little bit more wool around the body before I position the mermaid into into the position that she's mainly going to be in, and then I can start building up um, her her bum and her thighs. Um, well, her tail really. So I'm just adding a little bit more of the lanolin rich core wool around her body so that it's about um, two centimeters thick rather than sort of like the pencil thickness that I did earlier. But I'm making sure that that tail end isn't getting too much. Um, we don't want to build too much up on there. It needs to stay nice and delicate. There we go. So felt, you can felt that down a little bit. So you notice that I'm going past the wire rather than straight into the wire to felt it down. I'm actually stabbing it through into the mat. That's that really lovely, satisfying crunching noise. So I'm turning it over and then I stab again into the other side. The fibers will tangle up inside the shape, but they also will go through to the other side. So you have to keep repeating that until the fibers no longer poke out at the other end. But we don't need to do that too thoroughly just yet because we're going to now going to position the mermaid into the shape that she needs to be in. And and so the way that you do this, um, you put your uh, bending the body at a right angle so this part here will I'm going to bend this up now eight centimeters down now if I do this in the camera you can't really see the bend um, so I'm going I'm going to bend it up like there you go at, at a right angle and this part from here to there is eight centimeters <clears throat> and then um, and so she's now sitting down but you can give your sort of you can give the tail sort of a slight s bend so just put a little bend into it and it's almost like she can probably sit already just in that position so now you know where you need to build the bulk because we want to give her um a, a hips and bottom here want to um and then want to build up more bulk coming up here around the body that is probably the most challenging thing to do with a mermaid is to put the wool in the right places so um, i'm going to start by adding more of the upper body onto her so I use the lanolin rich core and i'm going to give her an a wrap around the top of her body and felt it down this is um, uh, now a question of adding bulk as you go. So you're not doing it with just one strand. You're, you're adding bulk, reassessing, adding bulk and felting in between. Um, I'm really excited that the day has finally come where we are going to um, be doing the... Um, butterfly the large blue butterfly workshop for the butterfly conservation um, charity and um, it's, it's so exciting to just know that actually something like that makes a huge difference to um, a charity that is trying to do something good for our environment and nature and so we are um, we'll be doing that tomorrow at 7 p.m however you can still get your butterfly um, kit way until the end of this year there it is um because the whilst the life is tomorrow and if you haven't got it don't worry you it will be recorded and you can watch it um at any point later so um that's what my mermaid looks like at the moment she oh she will be she will oh 
she will be lovely, but at the moment she looks a bit scrawny and um, like she needs a lot of fe feeding, which we are going to do. So I'm going to just have a quick look at the comments again. Um, uh, so we've answered the question about Beeswax Farm. Do give us the thumbs up. Remember to do that. Uh... Oh, Emma says there's a big thunderstorm going on where she is, up in the Midlands and a little bit higher up. Oh, Natasha has come up with her Royal Highness name. Busy Body Danger Pants. Aha! <laughs> that doesn't sound very royal, but the HRH, of course, does it in front. So, um, nice. Diane says, uh, my granddaughter's eighth birthday today, so we'll watch on Thursday. Love the colours of the mermaid. Oh, happy birthday! Um, Diane Baker's granddaughter, eight years old, sweet age. Um, Carol says, my mermaid name would be Coral, an anagram of my name, of course, well, almost. Oh, yes, I see there's an E missing. Um, Alison says, um, oh, internet dropped out then. I'm a bit behind. I would like the name Mermaid, Mermaid of the Shells. Loved the shell make last week. Nice. Um... <laughs> Serena says she feels famous having a mermaid named after her. So, yeah, right. Let's go back to um, fattening up our mermaid here. And um, so she needs she needs building up more bulk. Um, and the big the biggest sort of bulk that we need to build now is around her, her bum. Take some more of this lanolin rich. And we're wrapping this around her. Just above the bend which is why we bent it so that we can see where she, um, because the, the bottom of that wrap will become her, the bottom that she's sitting on. So you wrap a little bit more around that and give her her bottom so she can sit on there. And then you felt that down. So make sure that you felt this um, um, down so that she's actually, you know, felt it down from the top down. Um, so you can see I'm felting down so that this part where she's sitting on stays flat. Um, you could go down to a smaller needle size, get more control of the shaping. Felting this down to give her her bum. And... At some point, we are going to have to give her the upper body will become pink. So I'm not using too much of the lanolin rich core to make her upper body because I've got lots and lots of um, the pink left. There's there's a huge amount here still. So I'm I'm concentrating now to give her the right the right size of the of her um, her hips, her bum that she's sitting on, and um, it it kind of looks a bit weird. Um, the def def definite stages of weirdness in this mermaid where she where you think oh she's never going to be the right thing but that's not different from anything else that you do when you're needle felting as most of you know so keep adding the layers of um the core around that part of her body and also along because when once you've um Let's, let's get this right. So you will have to build up the tail once you've done her bottom part um, and we can add a little bit more later, but uh, you will have have to build up um, um, the tail, take a generous pinch of core wool and lay one end flat under the bottom of the mermaid. Um, of, of the mermaid. There you go. Um, on the opposite side to where the tail curves round. Okay, so that's the opposite side to what, it's actually the opposite side to what I've done on the instructions. So this is doubly confusing. It's mirror image and then fold over towards the tail. So we're folding this over towards the tail. So what you're doing is, I don't know if you can see it. It looks a bit weird. Like she's got a leg coming out from that side and there's nothing here. So what you're doing is by folding this over, you're bridging that gap and it looks like um, you're, you, you're sort of making um how do you how can you say you're bridging that gap ba basically and then you fell that down so you're making the tail more like a one piece coming from from her body rather than just um like one leg coming from one side and then felt all over 
to um, felt the, the, the wool down and keep that bottom part flat. I'm going between an extra fine and a fine needle um, at the moment because the extra the fine is a little bit too stubby but I'm using twisted needles and they they tend to be quite um, quite effective and quite efficient so you if you're just using a normal fine you might be fine with just using the fine you might be fine just using the fine that sounds a bit weird so I'm felting her um, still around her hips and her and her bum it's quite an important part of her her body looks very scrawny at the moment but that will change and then I'm going to even out now the tail part with um, the rest of the London and Rich core so that um, I'm continuing as I did from building the thigh area or where you imagine thighs to be I know it's all one piece so I don't really know how to call it but it's a tail hang on that's a bit messy let's undo this again so just build so that it tapers basically. So you're trying to um, bridge now the part of um, of her hips and bridging it to to the tail and felt that down as well. There we go. Love that feeling of stabbing the needle into the wool. It's so nice. So I'm I'm definitely keeping um, the um, um, the the body quite skinny at the moment because I've got lots of that pink wool, and um, we can use that to build up her bo upper body because it will turn to be pink later anyway. Oh, that very nearly broke my needle. So there you are. That's um, what her shape looks like at the moment. Just compare that to, um, yeah. So she's she's. Yeah, you can see where that's coming from now. We still could do a little bit more shaping here. And you will, um, um, when I end this um, live stream today, uh, we will have done the, the main shaping of the body. But if you feel you need to do a little bit more at home, just between the two parts of the live stream, then feel free to do that. But we are coloring in the, um, the mermaid with the blues um, during the next part so we're finishing her off next time and we're not going to color her, her into the with the blue today but we will get the main shape done so you can now decide whether you um, want to work a little bit more on her main tail by adding more wool still got a bit of lanolin rich left here um, or you can felt what you've got down there what you've got down down a bit more and then add more bulk. I'm just um, I'm just going to work on her upper body first now because I want to see where how that fits in proportion with the rest. So to work with the upper body now, you've got to make a choice. You can give her boobs. I've never needle felted boobs before like that, so that was quite a weird experience. But for that, you do need to use um, you need to use the the the, the pink, the flesh pink, and um. <clears throat> Um, you can you, they they will look absolutely weird when you when you make them. That's this is what it reminded me of a of a boob job gone wrong because it feels it literally feels like you're you're doing um, some plastic surgery there. So you will need two equal parts. That would be good if you had two um, two equal sized boobs. But life is not always perfect. So do your best. Do your best. That feels. Oh, feels a bit bigger that one. Okay, there we go. Two, two that, yeah, feel about the same. And then um, um, you're going to roll this into a ball shape with your fingers, like that. I'd love to hear some feedback on this one. So nice, nice, even as even as you can ball shape, you're not felting this on your mat at all, but you're actually attaching this to your mermaid by just going around the edges. And this is the bit that is the weirdest thing on the planet. Um, use your medium felting needle and just go around the edges of that ball that you've needle felted to felt these shapes on. Now, my mermaid is rather skinny at the top so this looks like mega big it's definitely a d cup double d if, if not 
Um, and obviously it needs to be just on one side, but at the moment we're just going around the outside. We're not stabbing right into it because we just want to uh, maintain the, the roundness of them. God, I'm so glad you can't see me and I can't see you. There we go. So, um, yeah, they're quite, they're rather big, but you can reduce them by going into them now. So if, if you really, if you're too not happy with the size of them, then you can reduce them because there's a lot of air that can be um, squeezed out by stabbing your needle into it. So keep stabbing into her boobs. Straight, straight into it and around the body um, that, that will reduce the size. And then you've got to do it again on the other side. So roll the ball up exactly the same as you did before. This is the test now, if they're the same size. And attach. Even if the body looks quite skinny at the moment, and you may have chosen to give her much smaller breasts, that's absolutely fine. Um, we can, there will be, <laughs> I'm so sorry, I just can't stop laughing at this. I want this to be over as quick as possible. <laughs> oh dear. Emma, give me some feedback. What do you think? Are you laughing your socks off? Are you flat on the ground? Anyway, um, so I'm, I'm attaching these round shapes as quickly as I possibly can to get over the embarrassed moment. I'm not really embarrassed about boobs, so don't get me wrong. It just looks kind of like a, a bad a bad cosmetic surgery job. That is what, what's, what I find more excruciating than anything. So, yes. Um, I've also lost Emma now, so I'm going to give her a call. I'm, um, for that, I'm going to just mute myself for a minute. Okay, all back. Um, right, so this is what my mermaid looks like at the moment. Um, definitely, um, <laughs> definitely busy, big, big boobs there. Um, and Emma pushed me away um, on on the phone when she was trying to tell me, uh, give me some feedback. I think she got a bit too excited there, but I've got her back, so it's all good. Um, right, overview camera, just another few steps. I actually like this one better than that one. So I don't know why that one looks a little bit better. But in any case, it doesn't really matter what they look like because we're going to cover them up now. So, and the way to cover them up is we are going to take some of the flesh pink wool and um, we're going to make it a nice, thin, wispy cover and um, and going to cover them up and then they will be absolutely perfect. So... Stab around the edges first. Remember, you will be covering the whole of the upper body. Even if this is not the finished size, you can use the pink wool to um, to get to the right size. I've also stabbed so much into the front that her back is really, really flat now. So I need to probably work on that a little bit as well. But I'm just stabbing that layer that I've I've put on there into her. Um, into her body just around it before I, I now I'm going back and stabbing right into that shape the shaping here at the front and now the they, they look better because they're like um they they haven't got all the cracks and stabby bits showing anymore you can still reduce the size if you want by just stabbing lots into them and making them smaller you can repeat the process of adding um, a du another dusting of wool over it if you if you need to even out the um, the surfaces the surface of it again and remember we are going to give her well you don't have to give her that but we are going to give her a cover of um, like a sort of a, um I don't know what to call it she's gonna have a top on basically she won't be without. I only had this conversation the other day um, that um, how how the Germans are slightly different in terms of modesty than say for example I'm, I'm generalizing here so you might be completely the odd, odd one out 
But I remember when I first moved to this country and I went to the sauna and I just I just went in there stark naked and I think everybody just died a million deaths. So did I because everybody wore a swimming costume. And um and that that's the first time I sort of realized, oops, I think things are different here in the UK. Best cover up. Um yeah, but um it's quite funny because it, certainly in German saunas or steam rooms, um yeah, people don't really care so much they just go in there as they were made um but yeah anyway there we go got a um definitely got um given her some boobs um and um what will happen next is that we've got a few minutes left is that you're going to cover the whole of the body in the in um of the upper body in the pink now so you've got more opportunity you can also wrap her upper arms a little bit to build up some bulk here and get the shoulders um, covered because she's got very sticky arms. Um, not sticky, but stick-like arms. They're not. They're not actually physically sticking. Um, so you can do that as well. So that is the work that you could be um, doing off offline for next time. And I'm going to ask Emma now to draw a winner because um, we need to do that still as well. So Emma is going to draw the winner um, who, from the comments that were made. And of course, Hannah will do this on Thursday on Facebook. So um, I can't announce the Thursday winner, but I will certainly announce the winner here now on, um, on YouTube, the live stream on YouTube. And then on Thursday, it will be on Facebook at 7 p.m. So if you want to have another chance to win or if you want to um, couldn't do it, couldn't felt along today, then you can certainly do that on Thursday. So I'm just, what you see me do now is I'm just covering parts of her upper body. I've given her more of a fatter upper arm. Um, I, I'm felting around her um, back at the moment and covering up all the white bits. So there's white bits here where her neck is. So you can use a little bit of the wool and go around her neck as well. Um, you can bend the arms out of um, out of the way if you if you um, if they're in the way. They've just sort of been sticking out on the side. So there's there's lots of um, lots of little bit of um, work that you can do now to um, to get to the final finished finish of the upper body. And remember, anything sort of below there, we will cover with um with a with a cover with a blue cover tomorrow um next week and um we are keeping however her back is is uncovered and so we need definitely need to give her an, a nice smooth finish on the back okay and um we've got a winner for today um thursday the 27th of um july 2021 and that is susan p you have won yourself um, our Enchanted Forest Wool Mix, which is brand new. It's not even, I don't think it's even available to purchase yet. Drop us a line at info at themakers.co.uk and uh, just let us know that you're today's winner and then we get the details from you and post it out to you. And that go is the same for the Thursday winner on Facebook. If um, if you just send us an email, info at themakers with double S dot co dot UK and um, and then let us know that you've won and we send it out to you. And please do share, even if it's work in progress, your lovely mermaids, even if they look like they should have chosen a better cosmetic surgeon, um, do share them with us on our Everyone a Maker group on, um, on Facebook as well, because we do want to see how you're all getting on and feedback is always good. And, um, and yeah, we, we'd love to see how you're getting on. So this is how far as I got with mine today. Um, I don't even want to hold it because she's so unfinished yet. But um, yeah, this is how she's looking. I think what I will be doing is I will be working a lot more on her back. And I'm going to put more meat around her waist. She's way too skinny um, for my liking. So this is what I'm going to be doing. But trust me, eventually she will be like um, dressed all looking pretty and colorful like that one so hopefully you had a good time today thank you for watching as always give us the thumbs up 
subscribe to our channel you get you get to know first what we're up to and we've got lots of exciting things all the rest of the year is all planned out what we're doing in terms of live streams so can't wait to see you throughout and actually tomorrow i'm heading off to the um, festival of quilts if any of you are going come and see us at stand g34 i will be giving a lecture on friday afternoon about um doll making as you all know um supporting the making soft dolls book that i've written and um yeah can't wait can't wait to venture out there again and actually see real people people face to face but don't worry we will be here with you as well um for as long as you need us so take care everybody thank you very much for for watching and i shall see you soon bye